domestic structures had been violently destroyed. Um, there were uh, storage jars full of grain that were all being burnt. Uh, yes, the uh, burnt wheat found there at Jericho is very important because it uh, ties in with our biblical story. Joshua 3.15 tells us that when the Israelites crossed the Jordan, it was at flood stage because it was during harvest time. And we see in Joshua 5.10 that after crossing the Jordan River, the Israelites celebrated the Passover. Uh, it tells us in the Bible, when the Israelites crossed the Jordan River, it was at flood stage because it was harvest time. Well, in the southern Jordan Valley, harvest time is in the spring of the year. Would you agree with uh, some of Wood's arguments as far as the wheat that was found there, that it at least tells us some basic information as far as what time of year uh, the city was destroyed? Yes, it, 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 his assumptions, I think, are reasonable. Those um, containers, those pots were full of grain, Therefore, it must, they must have been filled fairly soon after the harvest. We know that the Israelites came into the land and attacked Jericho in the spring of the year after Passover. And that's the same time of year as it is right now in Israel. All over Israel they're celebrating Passover and the people are bringing the wheat harvest in from the fields. And so we know both agriculturally and archaeologically that Jericho was attacked after the wheat harvest had been taken in. Now this is a very unusual find because grain was valuable. Why would you leave it to be burned up? Joshua 6.18 tells us that while destroying Jericho, the Israelites were commanded to keep away from the devoted things. Just the very fact that the grain was left to be destroyed in the fire tells us also uh, that uh, the Israelites obeyed God's command not to plunder the city. They're simply to offer up Jericho as an offering to the Lord as the first fruits of the promised land. The basic sequence of events found in the Bible describing Jericho matched the layer sequence the archaeologists found in the tell. And in fact, uh, Kathleen Kenyon introduced what we call the stratigraphic method of excavation here at Jericho, uh, where you just uh, peel down the layers, layer by layer, and uh, you, in particular, analyze the vertical sides of the trench or the square that you're digging, and uh, you draw it, you photograph it, because in the vertical trench, you have a sequence of the events that have taken place uh, as, as, as they're preserved in the earth layers. And she said, the evidence here shows that the walls collapsed first, the earthquake happened first, and then the fire happened. Mm. That's exactly what the Bible says. The walls came down, as the Israelites were marching around that seventh day, they went up into the city, then they set it on fire. Earthquake, fire. And she said, that's the sequence I have found here. In Joshua 6.26, Joshua said, Cursed before the Lord is the man who undertakes to rebuild this city, Jericho. On top of that destruction was this erosional layer. After the destruction, you get material rolling down the hillside. And uh, we can uh, account that to the fact that the city was abandoned for some period of time. Then a 
period when Jericho was not, about, it was not, not settled. It was abandoned, it was deserted. If you recall in the biblical story, Joshua pronounced a, a curse on Jericho, on anybody that would rebuild a city, uh, there would be a curse on that person. The ancient text tells us that the walls collapsed, that the city was burned and afterwards laid abandoned. When archaeologists dug at Jericho, they found that the wall had collapsed. The city had been burned, and it had lain abandoned for quite some time. That's the sequence in the Bible. That's the sequence Kathleen Kenyon discovered in her excavations. So if the archaeological evidence found here matches so well with the biblical account, then what's the problem? Why is there such a debate among scholars today about this site of Jericho? This obvious destruction of the city, which evidence Garstang found, evidence Kenyon found. The debate is over the date of that. So does the Bible in fact give us a date for the time of Joshua's destruction of Jericho? According to biblical chronology, the conquest happened around 1400 B.C. Yeah, I mean, we have 1 Kings 6, which uh, talks about in the fourth year of Solomon's reign. And that's about 967 B.C. It says it was 480 years after the time of the conquest by Joshua entrance into the land. So if you add those numbers together, you come to what we would consider an early date around 1446 B.C. So 1446, and then you've got to take the 40 years out for uh, the wandering in the wilderness, and so you come to around 1406? Yeah, for the time of Joshua's conquest. Historically, we know that Solomon began building the temple in 966 B.C. 1 Kings 6.1 tells us that this was 480 years after the Israelites had come out of Egypt. When we add 480 to 966, we come to 1446 B.C. And since we know that the Israelites wandered the desert for 40 years, we have to subtract that from 1446 B.C., bringing us to 1406, the biblical date for the conquest. After analyzing the pottery, Garstang dated the destruction of Jericho to around 1400 B.C. in agreement with the Bible. But Kenyon disagreed, dating the city's destruction 150 years earlier to around 1550 B.C. So the debate is over when the city was destroyed. The Bible says it was around 1400 B.C. Uh, Kathleen Kenyon said it was around 1550 B.C. This 150-year discrepancy has huge implications. It would mean that when the Israelites came into the land of Canaan, there would have been no city of Jericho for them to destroy. It would also mean that the writers of the biblical account would have fabricated the story of Joshua and the great battle of Jericho. She claimed quite clearly on the basis of the pottery dated to about 1550. I'm just saying John Garstang had it right, Kathleen Kenyon had it wrong. When you look over at the bulk over here and you see this uh, rim of this pot, is, are you looking at that and seeing um, pottery from, from the time of Joshua? Yes, absolutely. Yes, those storage jars are late bronze one, the same thing that uh, Garstang had found, and that carries over to all the other pots, cooking pots, storage jars, and bowls, and so on, yes. So what is the deal with pottery anyway, and how is it used to date the events in a tell? Well, think of it this way. Just like cars change in style over time, so did ancient pottery. So when archaeologists study pottery they excavate in a layer, they can estimate a date for the event that formed that layer. Pottery from different sites can then be compared with each other. These are called parallels. Yes, in order to make my case for the dating of the destruction of Jericho, I have to show beyond doubt that the pottery in that destruction level dates to the end of the 15th century B.C. And the only way I can do that in a credible fashion is to use parallels from other sites where scholars have already said this pottery dates to the end of the 15th century B.C. And so uh, it's not my word only. It's the word of all the other scholars who have excavated similar material, came to independent conclusions, and I'm merely uh, using their results and feeding it into my analysis and saying, yes, based on all this information, all this data we have from all these places, I can safely date this destruction to the end of the 15th century B.C.
Kenyon had dated that destruction 150 years earlier. How could she be so far wrong? She was a very good field archaeologist, but in her dating here, she, she made a critical error. She based her date on what she didn't find, which is always dangerous, an argument from silence. She, in this destruction layer, did not find a type of imported pottery from Cyprus, which was relatively common in that time period, but it's uh, easily distinguished, easily dated. Uh, and so she was looking for that kind of pottery to date her destruction level. She never paid any attention to the local Canaanite pottery, which was there in abundance. That's what Garstang used from his area over to the south, that local Canaanite pottery. He dated it based on that. She didn't pay any attention to that. She was looking for this imported Cypriot ware. She didn't find it. She said, must be nobody was living here. Otherwise, there would be Cypriot pottery from the late Bronze One period. And so she said it, it must have been destroyed before. Now, even though Kathleen Kenyon never did find this particular kind of pottery that was imported from Cyprus, John Garstang, who dug before her, did find an imitation of this same kind of Cypriot ware. And what an imitation is, is that it is a copy that uses the real type of pottery. And therefore, they both date to the same time period, around 1400 B.C. I have uh, studied all of the pottery that she excavated out of this destruction level. I've studied all of Garstang's pottery, and it's very clear that that destruction happened at the end of Late Bronze I, around 1400 B.C. Well, I think the, the, the strongest part of the argument was the question of pottery, where he said that the pottery that was found from the destruction, associated with the destruction, in view of the parallels he found at other sites, um, was to be dated close to 1400 and 1550. When we do an in-depth analysis of the finds from Jericho, we soon discover that the reason for the discrepancy is not because the Bible's wrong, but because of a misinterpretation of the archaeological evidence. I do tend, I suppose, to support Kenyon's interpretation, but at the same time, um, uh, some of the other critics have studied the material in greater depth. In this case, Kathleen Kenyon misdated the destruction of Jericho. So my mind is, is, is somewhat still open on the question of the date of that destruction. And once we analyze the material from the destruction level, we see she was wrong. The real date is around 1400 BC, the biblical time of the conquest. I'm a neutral. I do not know whether Jericho was invaded and attacked by Joshua. I tend to um, accept that there was a tradition, this is true, there is a tradition, obviously in the Old Testament, and I see no reason to believe that something like that didn't happen. If there is a conflict between an ancient text and modern scholarship, and you had to go with one or the other because they were in opposition to each other, which one would you see as the most reliable source, the modern scholars or the ancient text? Well, I think we have to go with the folks who wrote the text way back in antiquity. They were closer to the events than we are today. So when the archaeologists excavated at Jericho, did they find evidence that uh, matched that text or not? Well, yes, they did. They found that it was fortified, as the Bible says. We found that the walls fell down, as the Bible describes. This happened uh, at harvest time, as the Bible describes. The city was burned, as the Bible described. You would not know those details. It had to be somebody who was there and witnessed these events and recorded it at the time. An eyewitness account. That's the only answer. There's no other answer. So I think we have to take the Bible literally and believe that this really happened. This is real history. And those walls came down exactly as described. The battle for Jericho is one of the most memorable stories in the Bible. And since the Bible is our only ancient account for Jericho, and since the details in the text match so well with the archaeological evidence found here, then the best conclusion that we can draw is that at the time of Joshua's conquest, the walls of Jericho really did come tumbling down.